Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be playing Area 02 and obviously right now we're not looking at Area 02. So what I got to tell you guys real quick is that this video is going to be a longer one just because we're going to be talking about the new updates. We're going to be talking about the newsletter and then we're going to get into some gameplay. So if you guys want to skip forward to a specific segment on this video or if you guys are going to watch it all the way through, which if you guys watch it all the way through, you're pretty awesome compared to everybody else. But I will say that if you guys are watching this in the certain segments and stuff like that, like you guys want to skip forward to a certain part of the video, then I'll leave the timestamps in the description below so that way you guys know where you guys want to go. Anyways, to quickly get some of the updates out of the way, they now have a content creator program for Areas Joe 2, and I was lucky enough to get into the content creator program myself, and I could not have gotten here without you guys, so thank you guys so much for supporting me and getting me to this point where I'm a part of this program now. All I'm going to really be going through is the perks of the content creators and then the requirements just to let you guys know real fast. If you guys become a content creator, you guys get a rank within their group. You get a role on the Discord. You get the place on the Discord to advertise your Area 02 content. You got an in-game tag, and you also get Game Pass admin commands, as well as access to the Area 02 beta testing server. The requirements for the content creator program are a minimum of 1,500 subscribers, as well as a minimum average of 1,000 views per video, and then you have to fully understand and promote the rules of Area 02, consistently follow the rules both in-game and on Discord, and you have to be a member of the Area 02 Discord and Roblox group. One of the most important things as well, other than that, other than being, you know, following the rules and enforcing the rules to the best of your ability, at least like trying to get people to follow the rules, as well as promoting the following of the rules in the game and in Discord, you guys are also required to release Area 02 content at least once every two weeks. So that's that's another thing to keep in mind as well. Next, we have the Area 02 monthly newsletter, which at the request of Guard, which is in charge of the newsletter, I believe, the Guard would like you guys to check out the newsletter for yourself. I'll leave the link to it in the description below. Check out the game, obviously, and join these Area 02 Discord. So I'll leave all those links in the description below. Anyways, we're going to quickly get into this Area 02 letter, and then we're going to go ahead and cover some more updates, and then we're going to go ahead and get into the game for some gameplay. So for the Area 02 monthly newsletter, this is issue 06, 2nd of April, 2021 it's volume 2 brought to you by the media team the this is the official newsletter for area 02 here's the table of contents we have scp 002 learn about one of the scps in area 02 interviews see what known monarch and not unfazed do in the dev team update see all information about the new department update redacted overview learn more about the redacted teams within the foundation ent learn about the engineering and technical department we also have new uniforms check out the new uniforms that came with the department updates photos and then a the conclusion important announcements Staff application results. Staff application results have been announced in hashtag announcements. Go and congratulate the new child mods of Area 02. Area 02 newsletter changes. Since we implemented change to a single release per month, things have gotten a bit boring. Uh, newsletters will now be posted more often so you can get more content. Now we're going to be talking about the living room, also known as the item number SCP-002. Object class Euclid. Description SCP-002, mainly known as the living room, is a tumorous fleshy growth that is the same size as a small standard apartment with a spherical shape. SCP-002 is classified in the Euclid class located in Sector 3. SCP-002 has a fancy containment cell that requires a level 3 keycard clearance. SCP-002 was first discovered in a small crater that struck the Earth's crust in Portugal. SCP-002 has the capability to grow new furnishings throughout its time. SCP-002 has been capable of furnishing itself with new objects, including two lamps, rugs, televisions, radios, beanbag chairs, unknown books that are in different languages, children's toys, and plants. Scientists have tried to use animals to see how SCP-002 responds. Continued. Unfortunately, these tests have failed to show any type of responses. During SCP-002's transportation, four SCP security personnel were classed as missing after they were inexplicably drawn into SCP-002. SCP-002 has a volume roughly uh, equal to 60 meters that contains an iron valve hatch on the side of the object. However, while there is no opening visible from the exterior of SCP-002, there's a singular wall with a window on it. SCP-002's room contains furniture that appears to be sculptured bones, woven hair, and other biological substances that are produced by the human body. Here's some more pictures as well. Researchers have used DNA sequences of each object in the room to confirm that they are human substances. SCP-002 is to remain in place by a connected power supply that is provided. Power appears to charge up SCP-002. Additionally, if there was ever an electrical outage, the barrier between SCP-002 and the facility will have to be immediately closed and evacuated. Once the power in the facility is re-established, lights on the light spectrum are used to strobe the area until SCP-002 is able to recharge. Furthermore, SCP-002 is to be kept in a negative air pressure containment area at all times. No more than the minimum of two members are allowed within 20 meters of SCP-002 or its containment area. Continued once again. 
All personnel must maintain physical contact with others to ensure that everyone is within SB002's containment is still present. Any command staff that are to be escorted by five or more level 3 security personnel. After the test, all personnel are to evacuate at least five kilometers from SCP-002 and must undergo a 72-hour quarantine evaluation. No personnel below level 3 are allowed to access SCP-002 without the proper supervision of two level 4 staff ever since the Malhausen incident. Next time you are in Sector 3, stop by SCP-002 and check out the Anomaly's cool features. ENT main spot. To minimize response times to Chaos and Cersei attacks, Engineering and Technical Support Division members are advised to stay within the Class D cells so that all they need to do is wait until the Foundation Combative personnel have cleared the Class D cells of all Chaos Insurgency. When it's all clear, run over to fix the breach. By doing so, you save the lives of many Foundation personnel, allowing Combative personnel to have a head start in preparing their defenses. Engineering and Technical. The Engineering and Technical Support Division is unfortunately heavily regarded as one of the worst divisions within Area 02. However, it is actually one of the most important divisions within the Foundation. This article will explain why the Engineering and Technical Support Division is important as well as how to effectively use it. What does ENT do? The Engineering and Technical Support Division is responsible for the day-to-day -day maintenance of every single one of the Foundation's facilities. From establishing methods of communication within a facility to rebuilding a wall, this role is truly the backbone of the Foundation. Items Within Area 02, the Engineering and Technical Support Division spawns in Sector 1. Upon joining, you receive a Level 2 Clearance card and can receive a Level 3 and can eventually earn a Level 4 Clearance card. This unlocks access to most of the site's fascinating and daring facilities. What makes ENT special? What makes the Engineering and Technical Support Division stand out in Area 02 is its ability to fix breaches caused by the Chaos Insurgency. Whenever there is a raid, the Engineering and Technical Support Division are there to fix the wall, stop the Chaos Insurgency from attacking the Class D cells, and prevent Class D personnel from fleeing the facility. Recently, a new update has arrived in Area 02. This new edition of content is the second installment in the Department Overhaul update and brings a new assortment of guns, menus, and tweaks to balance gameplay. The most noticeable and important addition of the update is the assortment of new firearms to the redacted teams. A few examples of these weapons are the MPX, a versatile submachine gun, the Mossberg, perfect for up-close tight encounters, and the Scar H, an assault rifle fit for any situation. All these weapons will create new and challenging combat environments that will push your skills to the limits. And the image there is a CZ3A1 used by the ISD. As well as the weapons mentioned before, teams such as ISD, IA, MD, and DEA have received new and improved outfits that will allow better immersion of roleplay while within the site. The extra morphs have also been re-added to the intelligence agency and internal security department in a newly updated form, providing more versatility to these teams. The new update also adds a new game pass that allows you to customize your cursor's color and ammo counter through the bottom right of your screen to whatever you choose using the RGB format. Tip, if you do not know the RGB code for a color, go to Google and search RGB color picker to get a helpful tool. One of the smaller portions in this update is the sugar rush you get when drinking soda a certain amount of times. When drinking the same soda five times, you go into a temporary sugar rush which lasts for around 30 seconds. If you decide to keep drinking soda during this time period, you will die from consuming too much sugar. Finally, the recent content release brings some patches, balancing, and bug fixes, increasing the fluidity of Area 02. If your screen gets very bright, it is a sign you drink too much soda. Redacted Overview The teams located in the redacted region of the facility have a variety of jobs within Area 02. From recontaining SCPs to gathering intelligence, these are all of the redacted teams and their roles in the Foundation. Intelligence Agency Intelligence Agency, also known as IA, is in charge of general intelligence gathering as well as protecting the Foundation. They are equipped with a variety of guns to handle any situation. In addition to their vast armory of firearms, they, like all other redacted teams, have a level 5 key card that allows access to almost all of the site. Internal Security Department The next team in Redacted is the Internal Security Department. This team has similar aims as the Intelligence Agency, but usually carries out interrogations. ISD and all other Redacted teams may carry out an interrogation in the interrogation room, located near the entrance of Redacted. The ISD have similar weapons to IA, as well as a level 5 key card. The difference between these two teams is the extra morphs and the security cameras unique to ISD, which allow you to spy on all of the Foundation at any given time. Rapid Response Team Finally, Rapid Response Team RRT has the key role of helping Mobile Task Force recontain breached SCPs. RRT's spawn is linked with ISDs, meaning that RRT also has access to the cameras. The main difference between RRT and the rest of the Redacted is the greater arsenal of weapons they own, RRT comes equipped with more weapons and the bag, an item that allows for efficient recontainment. Overall, the Redacted teams have an essential role to fulfill within the Foundation and are a formidable force to be reckoned with. Interviews, Known Monarch ranked lead developer. During the DOU update, Known Monarch was the head developer. We asked a few questions for him to answer about the update and his background. Please give a quick introduction of yourself. I am Known Monarch, but most people just call me Ryan. 
I am one of the Area Zero Two lead developers, and at the time of writing this, the acting head of development for Okta Studios, the development team behind Area Zero Two. I have been on Roblox for seven years, and in these seven years, I have been in various genres. The most prominent genre being the SCP genre. What was your role in the department overhaul update, and how did you contribute? My role in the department overhaul update was the general oversight of the entire update. I was responsible for making sure that the update was published with all features properly added, with as minimal bugs as possible. Why did the department overhaul update come to be? The department overhaul update came to be because the development team realized there wasn't a lot to do on various teams, nor was there much of an incentive for teams. The development team revamped the teams to give people more incentive to play on Area Zero 2. Not unfazed, Rank is dev slash 3D modeler. Another developer for the DOU update was Not Unfazed. Not Unfazed is a 3D modeler for Area Zero 2. Please give a quick introduction of yourself. Hello, I am Not Unfazed. I am currently a 3D modeler and texture artist for Area Zero 2. And I've been working on Area Zero 2 for a little over two months now. What was your role in the update and how did you contribute? In the update, I was one of the 3D modelers. I contributed by modeling and texturing all 10 of the newly featured guns in this update. How successful would you say the update has been and why? I think the update was very successful and not just from a numbers standpoint but a content one as well. It's incredible how much new content and improvements were actually added in this new update. And I'd like to thank the other developers who have worked on the update alongside me, Elliptical, Citra II, Monarch, etc. for making this the most content fulfilling update that I have worked on so far. New uniforms. Area Zero 2 recently had a big update for each team. Currently, the new uniforms are one of the biggest improvements of all. ISD. The internal security department's ISD regular uniform consists of an all black tactical suit with a pistol holster on the left leg. The new uniform comes with an all black vest, exceptionally modeled earphones, and sunglasses. The extra morph uniform for ISD is also a dark tactical suit with two holsters on each leg. The torso of the suit has a more armored vest. The head part of the suit consists of a helmet that covers the entire face. Additionally, the suit comes with a beret. IA. The intelligence agency's IA regular uniform consists of a grayish suit with a new vest on the torso. Additionally, the left leg has a gun holster, the headpiece has a black fedora, black sunglasses, and earphones. IA's extra morph uniform was also improved. It is now a black vest. The legs both have two weapon holsters, while the torso has an armored chest protector. The head part of the uniform has a helmet with a red goggles. The helmet has night vision binoculars that are pushed up on the head. RRT. The rapid response team RRT has a similar uniform like the IA's. The uniform is all black with two weapon holsters and a black vest on the torso. The helmet has a visor that is flipped down to cover up the player's face. The back of the vest holds three items, which are a walkie-talkie, handcuffs, and two other weapon slots. RRT's extra morph uniform design is the same uniform as its regular counterparts. However, the visor is now placed upwards, and the vest now has three locations to store ammunition in the front. Here's our photo album. Let's see what's going on here. These are great. What is going on down here? Jeez. And here is the conclusion. Toad II, the Chief Executive Officer, Asmodeus II, Chief Operating Officer, Altifical, the Chief Staff Officer, Rare Finds UII, the Manager, Locks Locks II, Assistant Manager, and the Media Team, which is Guardian, Skyfall, Delctional, I might have said that name wrong, I apologize, Batman 100 Killer, Arkzoct, Corrupt Era. If you have a problem in the game, they have a support center with that that can help you with in game problems, bugs, staff reports, and ban appeals. If you have any concerns in game, make sure to create a ticket. Thanks for reading. Don't forget to check out our Instagram and Twitter for dev leaks, updates, and much more. Our Instagram is at official area 2 and our Twitter is at area 2 official. We hope you enjoyed this issue and have a great day. That was a lot to read. That was that was genuinely a lot and I'm glad that they switched to this monthly thing now because I, I remember reading the last newsletter and uh, I gotta say this one has so much more into it and oh my god that was a lot to read. But I, I enjoy reading it. I, I, honestly that was really fun for me to read. I think that the media team did an excellent job on this one and i really had a fun time reading this and there was also some stuff in here that i didn't quite know about all the way through so with reading this it made things more clear to me and i understand things a lot more now so i gotta say the media team did an excellent job i really enjoyed reading this and i hope that you guys enjoyed li either listening to me read it or you guys re read it for yourselves as well but yeah that was really good but again at the request of guardian i also want to let you guys know to please Check out the game for yourself, check out the newsletter for yourself, and join the Area Zero 2 Discord. All of which I will be leaving in the description of this video. Alright, finally on to some updates. Here we have the screenshot that I took of the announcement for some updates, and I'm going to read them quickly. Important information regarding the new RK slash TK system and the new authorized tool in the new update. Team killing and random killing have been disabled. However, there are exceptions. Each SCP chamber is marked as a combat zone meaning team killing is enabled there. This is to combat rule breakers that try to breach SCPs on a foundation team. Team killing without reason in combat zones is still against the rules. You are also able to kill anyone that's infected by SCPs. 
Fire, SCP-409, SCP-009, etc. The new authorized tool allows scientists to authorize up to three Class Ds and MD can authorize one Class D for a checkup at their spawn. MD should not be taking Class Ds to the SCP chambers. If your subject dies, gets unauthorized, tries to escape, changes team, or leaves the game, you'll be able to authorize another Class D. If you are a subject and your tester dies, changes team, or leaves, you will be unauthorized. You can't be arcade while you are authorized unless infected by an SCP. If you run away from your tester, you will be unauthorized. If you cross the red line in the CDC while authorized, the terminate tag will show if you get unauthorized. Then Rio takes a little fun uh, comment here at this uh, by saying, I hope that you all enjoyed not getting team killed by that random Xbox MTF player. <laughs> and then also, uh, there's now a return menu button in the top left and the alarm toggle button actually mutes all alarms. So there you guys go. That's that's that for that part. And now we have the SCP update part two. There is a lot to this. And I hope that you guys are bearing with me here because there's a lot to this. So the SCP part two, here's the team. We have Snorbear, Known Monarch, Lyptical, Insurrection Vanier, Rio, Noble Tactician, Mohei Scripps, Not Staka, Zapotec, and Zitra. I had the opportunity to meet Mohei and Snore in game, and I can't wait to meet and get to know the other developers as well a little bit better. But I, I can almost guarantee you that almost every one of these people are wonderful people. Oh, also, special thanks to the developer engagement team for assisting in the planning phase, of course. SCP screenshots. SCP-049. SCP-049 is a humanoid entity which bears the appearance of a medieval plague doctor. SCP-049 will become hostile with individuals it sees as being affected by the pestilence. SCP-049 will generally attempt to kill any such individual. SCP-049-2 instances are reanimated corpses that have been operated on by SP-049. SP-939. SP-939 are endothermic pack-based predators which display atrophy of various systems similar to proglobitic organisms. SCP-939's primary method of luring prey is the imitation of human speech in the voices of prior victims. SCP-939 exhale minute traces of an aerosolized Class C amnestic designated AMN-C227. SCP-017. SCP-017 is a humanoid figure approximately 80 centimeters in height, anatomically similar to a small child. SCP-017 seems to be composed of a shadowy, smoke-like shroud. SCP-017's reaction to shadows cast upon it is it leaps at the object casting a shadow and completely encloses it in its shroud, leaving no trace of the object behind. SCP-131 SCP-131-A and SCP-131-B are a pair of teardrop-shaped creatures roughly 30 centimeters in height with a single blue eye in the middle of their bodies. Communicate with each other via an untranslatable high-pitched babbling. The subjects can sense danger in their general vicinity. They will babble in a panicked tone as if to warn them. And here we will go quickly through the change log. Change log 1.6.0. Change menu version to 1.6.0, modified UA spawn area to remove the heaven door and to fix the displayed text as well as fix the sale game pass category. Fixed 106 attack speed delay after teleporting, rescripted 106 teleport speed to be faster, redesigned SCP-106's containment method to involve the femur breaker, added containment delays to all SCPs to prevent spawn camping, added a new loading UI to indicate to users how long they have to wait until the game is loaded, changed the freeze command to teleport a player to the staff member before freezing. The same Disabled player collisions. Main menu now uses marketplace service, which automates game pass prices so sales are registered correctly. Tweaked name tag icons, fixed kill logs duplicating, changed top bar button positions, changed top bar message, CMDR fixes, fixed team UI hints not changing for suitable platforms, improved profile command, made all morphs non collidable to fix collision glitches, fixed SCP 106 morph breaking, fixed SCP 714. New SCPs we have SCP 049, which is a new model animations and scripts, SCP 0 which is new model animations and scripts. SCP-939 and SCP-131 are postponed to 1.6.1, SCP-017, SCP-610-2, and SCP-610-3. We have SCP-610-2 with large health, slow movement, and a ranged attack, and 610-3 low health, fast movement, and a bite attack. Added the kick warn command that will kick a user and warn them at the same time. Added combat zones at SCP chambers, new authorized system, backend weapons system revamp. Added a return to menu button on the top bar added a CMDR button on the top bar, added a new ability for SCP-106, which is dash, allows the player to move rapidly for three seconds. Added a keybind for all SCPs that have controls. The keybind opens a UI listing the controls temporarily. For PC, it's H. Xbox, it's left D-pad. 
mobile is a touch button. Added containment delays to all SCPs, which is 30 seconds, following a breach to prevent spawn camping. Added support for the content creator program to Area 02, in-game commands, and a custom rank, etc. Added the disco command for senior moderators and above, new ACP UI and warn message UI. Added invisible ramps to all SCP chambers to fix bugged movement. They removed the April 1st update, disabled team killing and random killing, removed authorized tool from CMDR, and banned Toad. G goodbye, Toad. Now I'm counting. But yeah, that is all of the updates for this uh, this SCP update. And oh man, did we read through a lot today. I hope that you guys are still with me. If not, then you guys might have just skipped over to the gameplay. Well, well that's, that, that's, that's it for the update stuff. So, whew, that was a lot. That was a lot to get out. And finally, we are in Gamma. I hope that you guys are still here after me reading all that. That was a lot of stuff and I apologize. But you know what? It was worth reading and I hope that you guys found it worth for me to read as well. Let me know if you guys actually liked me reading all of that stuff or not in the comments below. It would really help me know if you guys want that in the future. Uh, today we're going to be playing on the O5 Council. This is the first and last time I will be talking about the O5 Council tutorial because I don't need to cover it in the future times I play as O5 since there are five categories of O5 I can play as. So here we go with the tutorial now. The O5 Council does not exist. You are the highest rank in the foundation. How you got here no one can tell you. What we can tell you is that you are in charge of everything. Yes my friend even isd so now i already decided that i'm going to be playing as o5 council but now the question is is which of these five am i going to be playing as i want you guys to think of which team i'm going to pick real quick and if you guys guess redacted you're correct we're going with redacted today more than likely i put that in the title of this video though so honestly you guys probably already knew before you clicked on this video <laughs> anyways so that's what we're planning on doing today we're just going to be a awesome looking o5 council member with our nice beautiful old famous and our glock 18 and we're just going to walk around and see what the facility has to offer us for today's gameplay. And that is a broken Plague Doctor right there. It took me a little bit to understand what that was. Man, I, I had to talk so much because I was reading all that stuff out. If you guys just skipped straight to the gameplay, I'm only a little sad, okay? Only a little. But I also understand because that was a lot to read. Are there any Chaos Insurgency in this server? There's one. Okay, that would make sense. Let's go find out what we are able to do here. Oh, that is a shy of the guys right there. Oh, but that's also another stuck SCP. What I get, you know what? Whatever happens in the SCP Foundation stays within the SCP Foundation, I guess. I hate to disappoint anybody, but I I'm a Wise Cola person. I know that some of you guys really dislike Wise Guy Cola, but listen, okay? I'm just here to spread love, happiness, and positivity. If you guys can't back me up on that, then I don't know what to tell you. Oh, Chaos Insurgency blew us stuff up. But anyways, yeah, I'm a Wise Guy fan, okay? This is a little bit of Wise Guy propaganda. If I see you guys in game and you guys are drinking some Wise Guy. I'll give you guys a high five, okay? We also got ourselves an Omni card, which is very epic, very nice. Oh, oh, I see a guy over there. Time to go attack. No, you. Get famished. Get famished. I guess that's that. I gotta get myself uh, a glizzy. Don't mind me, I'm just 05 with a glizzy. You know, after fighting that one Chaos Insurgency, I think it's time for me to take my break. I know I just started this gameplay, but you gotta remember to stay hydrated, especially after reading all that, you gotta stay hydrated. And uh, I know that some of you guys may dislike the Wise Guy soda, but let me know what soda you're a part of. If you guys are a part of Wise Guy, that's pretty cool, but if you guys are also a part of your own soda that you want to be a part of, that's awesome too. I just want to know what you guys think about Wise Guy. I also want to know what team you are on. What is part of the Soda War are you on? Interestingly enough, there's not quite a bit of things going on in the Class D cell area, which is kind of interesting to me. Also, in the future, I hope that O5 Council and Site Command get their own level progression. I know that it doesn't make a ton of sense because it's not like you can do what you do for Class D or Department of External Affairs and all these other teams. I think it would be nice to have some sort of progression on O5 and Site Command because they're the more expensive game passes, and I think it would be fun to rank them up as well. I don't know exactly what you would do for that though, but if the devs can manage to that, then I think that would be awesome. I gotta say though, I am a big fan of this Famous though. I am a pretty big fan. One thing I do wish, again though, is I wish that these saved. Like, I wish I could just go full on green, like this, and then whenever I die, it just stays green. That would be a very nice quality of life. Maybe I should leave that as a suggestion now that I think about it. Okay, there's definitely a Chaos Insurgency somewhere. Oh, there it is. Well, I'll let that security go and fight. Godspeed. 
I was missing too much of my shots there. Plus, the Fabus doesn't have a bunch of bullets in its magazine normally. It normally just has 25. I mean, that's definitely enough to down somebody, but like, eh. Not if you're me, apparently. Oh my goodness, I almost went through that door. Well, time to go explore the facility, make sure everything is good and everybody's behaving. What is 106 and 035 doing in here? What's going on, dude? I hope I don't have to server hop because there's not a lot of action going down in this server, but it's it's okay. It's okay if I gotta do that. We'll go ahead and check out the administrative lounge real fast just to, I guess, vibe? I don't know. 05 Council can really do whatever they want, it feels like, almost in this game. Which is kind of what they should be able to do, in my opinion. I mean, they are 05 Council for a reason, am I right? Not gonna lie, though, the redacted outfit looks really good for 05. I mean, like, look at this. Looks very good. I like it. You are not allowed here. What? Test me. No. Test me. <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't, dude. That's great. That's beautiful. One of my favorite things, though, is I love seeing how many of you guys are on the Xbox platform playing this game. I don't know what it is, but that makes me really happy knowing that a game on Roblox has this much support for Xbox players. Again though, I gotta say, I would really like for anybody that's on PC or mobile to be able to have the ability to chat with each other through a radio in this game. And then I, I know that you can't do that for Xbox players and that makes me sad, but if at least the PC and mobile players could get, could get that feature, that would give a lot more of uh, fluidity, I guess. I don't know what uh, the word, I don't know what the correct word is for it, but like basically, if you gave the PC and mobile players, since you are able to detect that that specific tool, that would be awesome. But I also am not a Roblox dev, nor do I dev anything myself currently, so I don't know how hard it, that would actually be, especially in a game like Area Zero Two. But I'm just saying, if the if the devs could add that, that would be that would be pretty cool too. That'd be pretty cool. It seems like a lot of people are actually in the loading screen right now, and a lot of other people are scientists and. Uh, they're doing the facility job as it looks like actually mostly right now now if you guys know anything about my aesthetic this is nice i like that yeah you know what i think it's about time we server hop i also forgot to mention the news right here which is brand new scps and content available as well as data and quality of life changes and it tells you all this stuff right here which i got more into detail on that with the readings and stuff at the beginning of the video so yeah there's that as well in this server there is five ci and as a redacted 05 council, we're going to go ahead and combat that and hopefully we can demolish the CI. Also, I'm sorry if the gameplay portion of this video is not going to be plentiful, I guess, just because there was so much that I had to do already for this recording. And there's probably going to be a ton I have to edit as well with this. So I hope you guys can bear with me as well, because that was a lot. That was a lot of stuff I had to read. I'm not even joking. Like, he, like that was that was quite a bit. That was quite a bit. Although it was all worth it. It definitely was all worth it. And this is what I'm talking about. I pulled this out, and now look, there's it's not green anymore. I want it to be neon green. It's okay though. I understand. I understand. Hello there, Shaga. How you doing? How you doing, Castle Surgery? How you doing? Alright, that's one Castle Surgency down. Was there only one CI that I had to worry about? Alright, I mean, fine by me, I guess. Uh, looks like a CI just got two people, so maybe I'll, I'll have to go look at that some more. I'm making sure not to look at you, Shy Guy, because you're kind of scary. Oh, I'm hearing, I'm hearing doors open up. Okay, we're good. I have no idea where the action's going on right now. I just see that some people are indeed dying. We gotta go check in on our best friend 999 over here. It's okay. I'm assuming that maybe they're just rushing through the Sector 1 personnel spawn area thing, I believe. What I am missing, though, is I am missing my glizzy. But instead, I'm gonna get candy this time. What are you doing over there? Got him. I just wanted to relax with my candy. Oh, is that is that CI? Goodbye. Oh, five counts are granted through gate A. All right. All right. Wait, are R05 allowed to go outside? You know what? I actually believe it is not against the rules for me to go outside since I am actually granted that area. As long as your MTF, Rapid Response Team, Site Command, 05 Council, it seems like you're actually allowed to go outside as long as you're not spawn camping or something. So that could, t that could lead to a lot of fun, actually, in my opinion. All right, let's go check out the CDC one last time. I hope everything's going all right in here. Well then, I mean, it seems like everybody's got this stuff under control. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. There was a lot of stuff that was covered in this video, and I hope that it was okay with you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about all of that in the comments below, please. That would really help me understand and know if you guys would like to see stuff like this in the future.
I love you guys, and I actually had so much fun recording this video. As always, I always enjoy making videos for you guys. This one was probably the longest one I've ever created on my channel, period, ever, so let me know if it was good. If you guys want to see more content like this one, you guys can leave a like or a comment down below. If you guys want to see more content from me in general, you guys can subscribe. And if you guys want to get notified for when I do anything on this channel, you guys can hit the notification bell. Don't forget to join my Roblox group and my Discord community server in the description below, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!